You're listening to Miss Style, Strength, and Grace with Deidre Murphy. This is your one-stop shop for style, fashion, health, and fitness. Deidre's passion is to help empower women to reach their fullest potential, both inside and out. Deidre and her guests will be discussing how to develop your style, health, and lifestyle hacks to energize your day and inspire you to keep reaching higher levels of success. Deidre is a professional fashion stylist, health guru, and Mrs. Washington 2017. It's time to get open and honest with Deidre. Today, I am thrilled to release my interview with Jenny McQuail. She's a journalist and an award-winning documentary filmmaker. Her latest feature film, Straight Curve, Redefining Body Image, premiered last summer on Epics, and it's now moving into educational and international distribution with Roco Films. So the documentary itself, Straight Curve, Redefining Body Image is a documentary about our own body image crisis and how industry leaders are now challenging society's dangerous and unrealistic standards of beauty. Jenny has appeared on Good Morning America and the Today Show in the U.S. discussing body image as well as being interviewed by Vogue Magazine, Well Plus Good, Huffington Post, People Magazine, Glamour Magazine, Women, and Hollywood, amongst a few others. So today in this episode, Jenny and I not only dove deep into the documentary, what it encompasses, what its message is about, but we also talked about the unattainable beauty standards that are so pervasive in our society today and why her message in this documentary is so important for both women and men to share and how we can share that message with the House Party Project. So I hope you enjoy listening and hope that you get something out of this amazing documentary as much as I did. Well, hello and welcome listeners. As you know, on my podcast, we love to discuss style, fashion, health and beauty, and even nutrition. Well, today I'm really eager to have you listen to today's guest, and her name is Jenny McQuail, and she and I are discussing her upcoming documentary called Straight Curve, Redefining Body Image. Not only does it touch on the beauty industry, but self-esteem and body image, but more importantly, health. Many women, young girls, and teens are especially putting their bodies and overall health at risk due due to the unattainably high standards of perfection set by by our modeling, fashion, and beauty industry. So Jenny is here today to talk about the documentary that's already premiered on Epics last June, but in May, you will be able to rent and or purchase this documentary from Amazon, iTunes, all of the online platforms. So Jenny, hello and welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me. I'm doing great. So (laughs) let's go ahead and just start with a little bit of a snapshot of your background and how you got into the documentary and filmmaking industry. Yeah, sure. Um, So I'm Irish, born and raised in Ireland, and my background's in journalism. I've been a journalist for 15 years now, and I started out my career in Dublin, and then I moved to London and worked as a journalist in London for a few years, and then I decided to throw it all in and travel around the world (laughs) for four years. Um, so as I was kind of backpacking around the world, I met all these incredible people and and heard all these incredible stories and really thought to myself that I wanted to move into a different realm of storytelling and tell these stories in a more visual manner. And I think, you know, the world has also evolved and people want more from their media. They want a lot of video content as opposed to just the written word now. So, um, I decided to move to New York city and, I did a second degree here in documentary film production and started making Straight Curve about three years ago. Wow, I love that. And what's funny is that you mentioned that you're Irish. And as we were emailing back and forth, you saw my name and you're like, wow, that's such an Irish sounding name. I was like, I know, but I'm not even Irish. <laughs> I know, that's funny. <laughs> and I've been asked that before. It's kind of funny because I married into the name Murphy and it just kind of coincided mm-hmm. with my whole name. And I actually really... Um, resonated with it. Once I changed my name, I was like, oh, I like that it sounds Irish, even though I'm technically not. (laughs) Um, Anyway, what led you down the path of wanting to get involved in journalism per se? 
In journalism, wow. Um, I think I've always been really nosy, so I always kind of, <laughs> why, I think, you know, when you're younger, it's, it's nosy, you know, search for knowledge, and I think I always kind of was really interested in that, and I always just wanted to know more. I was super inquisitive. I always asked why and, you know, annoyed my parents when I was growing up, um, and I think I decided when I was 16, I, I, in Ireland, you have to do these exams, and I was 16 when I was doing them, and they're basically exams that give you points, which enable you to get the college degree that you want, the college course that you want. So um, I had to decide when I was 16, which was a little young, but actually, it totally worked out. <laughs> um, I was, yeah, I think it's it's an amazing field, and I feel really kind of blessed to be a part of the journalism world, particularly right now, and I think it's a really, really important space to be in, and, you know, I'm not writing necessarily anymore, but that's not to say that I wouldn't be in the future, and I think storytelling is, crosses a lot of different gamuts right now, and I think it's a really important place to be in, and also, like, super interesting. Yeah, I was really intrigued by the documentary, which you were so gracious enough to share with me early on. Um, let's start talking about the documentary a little bit more because like you said, it's it's storytelling. I feel like that's how people connect on a deeper level is understanding what people are going through. So what was your catalyst when it came down to researching the movie? Right. Um, like I feel, you know, Straight Curve, Redefining Body Image, it's a film for anybody who has ever woken up and looked in the mirror and just thought that they weren't enough. And I think that pretty much sums up every human living person, right? And Raising my hands over here this, both at the same issue, time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this issue of body image is a very, very serious issue. And it's affecting a lot more young people in society today than it even was 10 years ago. And in the film, it's said that this is a very serious public health issue. And it is. And we have to start talking about it. You know, us as adults, we have, you know, really created this monster, created these unattainable beauty standards for our next generation. We've kind of told them that unless you look a certain way, you won't be happy, you won't be able to find the person that you're meant to, you know, end up with, you won't be able to succeed, you won't be able to get that job. You know, this is crazy. And I think that we really have to roll back that messaging and really start talking about all the different standards of beauty that exist in the world and that different sizes and shapes and colors and backgrounds, religions, abilities, identities, that it all matters and that every woman and every man should be able to see themselves represented in different forms of media. They should be able to see themselves represented in fashion. They should be able to buy clothes for themselves. And I think that's kind of what we wanted to address with the film. And then more importantly now with our release in May and our house party project, we want to bring this concept into the home so that people all over the country can start to have these really important conversations. And I think, you know, sometimes they can be a little bit sticky and a little bit tricky and we don't really want to talk about our bodies, but the reality is we have to start talking about it and we have to be more open about this. And with, you know, social media now, kids out there are seeing different kinds of images and that's just the reality and hiding behind that isn't going to help anyone but being able to kind of sit down with your kids with their friends and have open and frank conversations about you know representation about body image about social media responsibility you know that's really really key and we have built this really great screening kit that goes along with the film to help parents to help women to help men to help people kind of facilitate these kind of conversations and also have really fun activities around it that just make you feel better about yourself. Yeah. Well, that actually leads me to something I was going to ask later, but you know, tell me about the house party project and and what the screening kits include to help people not only watch the film productively, but have meaningful conversations around the information provided in the documentary. Right. I mean, I think the idea of a house party project is really to build community, right? So house parties are about building community and sharing a common conversation. And we want to encourage, you know, sororities to have movie nights. We want to encourage moms to get their kids and their kids' friends together. We want to encourage women to just like have a pajama party and sit with their, you know, three best friends 
and watch the film and then just like have a conversation after about their own realities with this film. So really using the film as a jumping off point to have deeper conversations and more valuable conversations about these topics that are that are really really key and that's we've we've built a screening kit that will be available on our website for free to go along with the film and this it was curated by a lot of experts so experts from the National Eating Disorder Association so there's a lot in there about eating disorders if that's an issue that's affecting your family there is issues in there like I said earlier on social media responsibility and what that looks like now and how do we harness social media as a tool for good and not just the evils that we keep hearing about every single day there's also uh, sections of media literacy. So how are we interpreting the images that we're seeing out there in the media? How do we talk to people about, you know, what Photoshop looks like, what images are real and what images are not? And, you know, using clips and, and imagery from the film to kind of demonstrate these these issues and these subject matters so that it, it's kind of a, a it's fun and it's engaging and it's not, you know, you don't feel like you're being spoken to. You don't feel like you're being schooled. But it's a really, really kind of fun, engaging way to have conversations that we should be having more of. Yeah. And it creates more of an interactive experience, too, for everybody watching it and maybe even pausing during points in the movie and discussing factors or saying, like, well, how does that affect you? And I just love that. And then not just women, too, but how can women share this with the men in their lives? Like, and why is that important to incorporate men into this aspect as well? Right. And I think that's... I get asked that question at every single screening event I do. Every journalist has always asked me, what about the men? And I think it's so crucial in a mul multitude of ways. So I think, you know, we are encouraging women to invite the men in your lives to be a part of, you know, your house party if it feels comfortable. So, you know, if you have men in your life that you want to share these conversations with, then by all means, please bring them into the fold. This conversation is absolutely vital for men. There's a statistic in the film that says 10 million men suffer from eating disorders in this country. And the body image is issues that are affecting men are absolutely on the rise. So, you know, this, this is an issue that affects the men, but it also is an issue that affects men in the way that they are oftentimes the decision makers. So these men are at the top levels of companies. They're hiring women. They're photographers who are portraying women in a certain way. There are magazine editors out there who are putting content out into the world. So I think this film is really, really important to show the game changers in the business that your bottom line can actually improve by being more representative of women and men in general and being more inclusive in your imagery, being more inclusive in your designs, in your conversations. And, you know, I, I fully believe that leading by example is how you create change. And, and what was really important about this film was that it wasn't a takedown. It wasn't, you know, tearing anybody apart or ripping into people who are doing everything wrong. It's very much an encouraging, uplifting film which celebrates the people who are actually trying to fight back against these unrealistic beauty standards that we have and these people that are really trying to change the conversation. And I think by showing their journeys and by showing their successes, all that can do is really show other stakeholders that it does work to improve your business. It does improve your bottom line. And to say otherwise is just ridiculous in this day and age. Absolutely. It actually reminds me of a girl that's from my home state of Washington. Her name is Jamie Kern Lima, and she created It Cosmetics. I don't know if you're familiar with that brand. Mm -hmm. And at first, she they were only p uh, promoting models and like these women with perfect faces and no blemishes to conceal and she went on QVC and showed without makeup all of her you know issues that she struggled with and she actually has um, like hyperpigmentation on her face and she showed how well the makeup covered and that's when their sales boomed so it just shows that being mm -hmm. real with people especially on you know whether it's QVC and on TV or media social media that being real and open with people is actually what connects them and that's what will again like you said help the bottom line if that's what people and CEOs are worried about for their company. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, right. You kind of started to mention it a little bit, but let's talk a little bit more about the documentary itself. What is the mm -hmm. premise, the overall premise of the movie? 
Um, well, the movie really looks at the issue of body image through the lens of the fashion industry and the media. And it profiles the, the people who are kind of fighting to change these unrealistic standards of beauty. Um, so we open the film by talking to teenage girls about these issues. We see and we hear from them firsthand about their struggles and their insecurities and what we as adults have pretty much done to fail them. And, you know, we hear from these girls that they feel disgusting or less than and that they can't go about their day because they just don't feel worthy. So, you know, these are girls that are going to grow up to be our next leaders. These are the girls that are going to grow up to be our next politicians. These are the next CEOs of this country. But they can't do that if they don't feel like they can't even get out of bed in the morning. So it is up to us to really change the narrative for these girls and make them feel more empowered to actually go and shatter those glass ceilings. And I think... You know, after we hear from the girls in the film, we then meet this new range of role models that exist out in the world and, and these different models that are, are of different shapes and of different sizes and ethnicities, skin tones, ages. And these women share with us kind of their journey through learning how to love their bodies or, you know, the, the continuing journey because you're I don't think you're it's a destination. I think it's a continuous journey. And and I think hearing these role models talk about their personal journeys really, really impacts these young girls. And they see people that they might follow on Instagram, for example, and they see people that they think like maybe so glamorous and they hear that these people share the same issues that they do. And it just gives people a little bit more self-esteem. It gives people, you know, they, it makes people feel like their problems are shared. And I think that was really, really important with the, the characters in the film. And, you know, we also hear from from designers like Christian Siriano and, and Becca from Chromat, who are being very inclusive with their um, are being very inclusive with their new fashion lines during New York Fashion Week. We hear from Airy, which is, you know, an incredible company that have decided to not retouch their images so that they show models uh, with you know, when you bend, you have rolls in your belly and, and all that good stuff. You have cellulite. We all have it. <laughs> it's there. And, um, yeah, uh, you know, we, we talked to Lane Bryant about some of their amazing hashtag campaigns that they did. Um, so there's – and Tim Gunn is in there who everyone loves. Um, so there's, there's a lot of real stakeholders in kind of the fashion and media industry talking about, you know, where we're at, where we need to get to and, and – really the the change that is afoot. I was really impressed with how many people were in not only included in the documentary that were on board with it, but you know, people that were willing to give you interviews and then the models that were willing to participate in the the film itself. But it did lead me to wonder, was there anybody in the fashion or beauty industry that kind of gave you pushback and, you know, either refused to be interviewed or give you a comment and they really weren't being cooperative? Um, so there's there's nobody in particular that I approached to interview that said no. Um, what the spine of our film is this uh, groundbreaking photo shoot where we basically photograph 12 models of different shapes and sizes and, and ethnicities and ages to show what the imagery we should be seeing more of looks like. Um, and then we we put those images together in an exhibit at the end of the film so for that photo shoot, our stylist had a lot of issues. She came across a lot of brands and a lot of designers who would not give us clothes because they did not want them to be seen on the larger women. Um, oh. there, there were agents who didn't want their straight size, size zero to four models, standing beside larger plus size models in photographs in case their clients would basically not hire them again in case it would, you know, dilute the brand. Um, there were even shoe designers who apparently said no, that they didn't want plus size women wearing their shoes. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess so, that just helps you figure out which companies and brands you wanted to pursue and collaborate with and narrows down the pool. <laughs> but I mean, exactly. It shows that, you know, we still have a lot more, a long, long way to go in this conversation. You know, we, we are moving, but we, we still have a long way to go. Yeah. How did the models feel about that? Like if they were told, oh, we don't want the, the straight 
model. So if anybody's listening, the straight sizes are girls that are between zero and size four. And anything beyond that is considered a curve model. Um, you know, what if they were being told, Hey, we don't, our agency doesn't want you to stand next to the, the curve model. Like did the models themselves have any issues with that? I'm sure they did. They don't really get a say, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> The reality, um, you know, that would be super hurtful, but also not surprising. Like these, mm-hmm. you know, these women, these these models have lived in this industry and I think suffered at the hands of this industry for a very, very long time. And finally, you know, there is representation for curve models. You know, there, there wasn't always agents out there who would take on curve models, period. Yeah. So, you know, we're starting to see more agencies have more diversity in sizing across the board and I think that's what's really really kind of important and as that progresses it's just going to become the norm and I think as it becomes the norm then the hope would be that that there will be less pushback and and we're already seeing that we're already seeing like an improvement for sure but Still a long way to go. Absolutely. One step at a time. I think too, Mm -hmm. as we're starting to get more representation of not only different body types, but even different cultures and even different skin tones, you know, how else can we as a society send the message to the beauty industry that that's what we want to see more of? Right. I think that we have a tool with social media now that we did not have 10 years ago. We have this platform that we can basically use our voice and I can tell you now, because I know this firsthand, brands, media companies, they all have hired people to actually read their social media feeds. People every single day are reading those feeds and they are reporting back. So if you think that you're you know, shouting into the abyss by commenting on, on, on like a brand's Instagram page, you're not. And that's the reality now. So I think you know, we, we as a film have launched a campaign that we hope that we will um, engage a little bit more on around the house party project, but it's called the hashtag I want to see campaign. And we're basically encouraging people to, you know, use take our flyer and fill in what you want to see more of in the fashion industry, in media, in advertising, in the imagery that you just see around you in the world and to tag the brand, the media company, the advertising agency, and let them know what you want to see more of. And I think, you know, you can also tell brands when they get it wrong. You know, we're not encouraging people, don't troll, that's not cool. But mm-hmm. tell people, hey, you know, I kind of wish that you had have included a woman who was, I don't know, a larger size. Or I wish that you had have included, you know, an Asian woman in this campaign. Or I wish you had have included somebody of different ability. Like, You can tell these brands, they want to know what you want to see. And I think that we need to be using our social media platform to tell these brands and vote with your wallet. Don't buy product that is not representing you, period. Absolutely, absolutely. That's why I was really encouraged to start shopping actually at places like Target again, because they started showing models and things that haven't been perfectly retouched you know they're actually showing Mm -hmm. a bunch of different body types in their advertising in their their marketing and you know I may not be you know quote unquote plus size myself but it's still encouraging to me as somebody that I've dealt with and I still struggle with eating disorders and it's something I developed later in life and I think Mm -hmm. all women like you know when you said earlier it's all something we all struggle with I had both hands up in the air like yes we're all there (laughs) and I think like you said with the social media nowadays, we have a tool, we have a voice, mm-hmm. we have that microphone and it's about time we started using it, not just there, but like you said, with our wallets, like if I could start anything of what you just said, I'm like, that would be it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, so I did want to talk a little bit about like parents and how they might not know exactly what their child is constantly being bombarded with, you know, as we're moving mm-hmm. away from constant print advertising, you know, with magazines, like those are moving away and it's all online. Now, parents might not be completely aware of the messages that are getting sent to their, their teens and their daughters and their sons. So how can parents still instill in their daughters a positive self image and negate all that bombardment of perfection? Right. I think that you know, it's, I, I tell parents, it's, it's really, really important to try and curate your child's social media feed, your, your child's Instagram feed. And I think that 
it's, you know, it's not difficult to seek out body positive, inclusive imagery on social media. So, you know, we, the, our, our Instagram page, which is at Straight Curve Film, we have basically decided to evolve this platform into just a platform for women and a platform for women of like from every background possible, suffering every issue possible. And we only put out the most, you know, inspiring and inspirational content on there so that when you're scrolling on a daily basis and seeing thousands of images, that at least some of those images will make you feel better about yourself. So I think as a parent, you know, you can really start looking for more positive role models and curate your child's feed. I say it all the time. Get on there. Don't be afraid of social media. Your child lives in the social media era. Whether you understand it or not, your kid understands it. It's their language. And to pretend that it's not happening or that your kid won't be into it is just a total lie. So I think that instead finding a way to kind of get to grips with it and understand it yourself and really kind of curating your feed, which is something that we're able to do, which is really, really powerful. You know, you're able to choose the people that you follow. So, mm. you know, cur curate feeds and also seek out media that has characters in there that are represent different people from different walks of life, you know? And I think that there's more and more content available now than there was when I was growing up, you know? And I think just, you know, doing a little Google search to, to more inclusive, more diverse content on TV, movies, you know, I think that it exists out there. And I think there is a responsibility now on parents to actually do what you can. And all you can do is, you know, try and have your, your family movie night be something that's a little bit more inclusive, right? And then try and curate your, your kid's Instagram feed. That's super smart because I think a lot of parents that don't understand social media, they kind of almost bury their head in the sand about it and be like, oh, well, I don't get it. So I'm just not going to worry about it. And it's like, no, you can get involved. And rather than cry about it, be like, well, I don't understand it. Uh, I'm just going to ban it from my kids. Well, that's not going to work because they're going to get on it somehow, you know, using it to your advantage and helping them figure out which posts to follow. And like you said, the more you like something, the more Instagram and Facebook will give you similar content. So if you start mm -hmm. to curate that, you can really hone in on what messages are being sent to your kids. I love that. Right. So exactly. with the house party project, and like you said, like monitoring not only what they're seeing on Facebook, Facebook and Instagram and then showing your kids this type of positive movie with the house party project. What I guess my overall question here is like, what else can people do to get involved? So I'll just leave it at that. What else can people do to, to help <laughs> share this message? Um, well, I think, I mean, the most meaningful way to get involved with this is to like seek out our film it's going to be launched on itunes and amazon vod on may 18th go onto our website which is www.straightcurvefilm.com and the screening kit will be on there for free um also on there you can follow us you can find all of our social media platforms you know, so keeping an eye on what we're doing, and we always point to other resources of people who are working in this space and doing a really great job. So, you know, we have resources on our website of different girl groups or different girl organizations that you could potentially have your younger child get involved with. Um, we're also doing a big launch event with CoverGirl and the Gina Davis Institute on May 22nd, which is really, really exciting. And we're going to be doing uh, a big screening event in New York City with a panel. And the panel is going to be full of really, really, really engaging people. And we're going to stream that live on Facebook Live on the night of, the, of May 22nd. So anybody can watch this panel. You can hear people speaking firsthand about their own issues. And, you know, we're, we're hoping that on Facebook Live people can engage. So you can send in your own questions. You can have your voice be heard by these people on, on this platform and I think like that's what's really really key and then just continuing to use your own voice in your own world and you know not being afraid to to kind of be yourself and own your own Instagram platform your own social media platform put your story out there and and be authentic and true and I think that's what resonates with other people and you know we don't all want to see those like face-tuned perfect 
beach shots all the time. You know, we want to see people and their real lives and, and their struggles and, and their pain. And that's, that's kind of what helps people, people not feel alone. So, you know, be, be kind of authentic, be, be true. And I think that's, what's really, really important. And then just tweet at brands, tweet at magazines, tell them what you want to see because they're listening. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that's, that's really exciting. Can you tell me a little bit about how you got both CoverGirl and the Gina Davis Institute to be on board with this, not only your launch, but this message? Yeah, for sure. So CoverGirl have um, relaunched in the last kind of six to eight months, and their their new tagline is all about kind of embracing your unique identity. So they've really evolved with this conversation, with this messaging, and they've realized that women now don't want to be sold like you know they don't want to they don't want their insecurities to be sold to they want to feel empowered by a product if they're going to buy it and i think that's what's really really crucial about this new age of kind of marketing and and advertising it's like don't try and be a little a woman they're not going to open their wallets if you make someone feel like crap right you have to make women feel like a product is going to make them feel empowered and you know i think covergirl copped onto this and and have really rebranded and in this rebranding they really want to show consumers that they're, you know, walking the walk and, and are very much aligned with kind of our film and our messaging. And we're planning this really exciting event together. And and I think the Gina Davis Institute is really, really exciting because it basically looks at gender in media and how representation on screen can affect girls in their daily lives. So it's pretty much, you know, what, what our film is about as well. But they look at mainstream box office movies and TV shows and the overarching kind of representation of women and women of color, women of different abilities. And it's, it's solely based on women. Um, but they build these really, really in- interesting statistics uh, about the, the top 100 box office hits of, of every year and put those out in the world. And they're always super shocking about, you know, the lack of representation and how that is damaging our next generation of girls. They can't even see themselves represented. They don't feel like they can really go for their dreams and reach their goals because they don't see anybody leading by example. So, you know, that's the Gina Davis Institute or another incredible partner to have on board with this. And um, I think that we're going to have a really, really meaningful event. And, and that's on May 22nd. And if you kind of keep an eye on our social media or our website, There'll be details up there and how you can watch the Facebook live stream that night and find out more. Awesome. Well, as a little recap, can you give our listeners both the Instagram and the website that people can find and follow this message along with? Sure. So the Instagram is at Straight Curve Film. Our Twitter is at Straight Curve NY. And the website is www.straightcurvefilm.com. And we're also on Facebook. Okay. A straight curve film as well. Straight curve film. Yes. That's awesome. Um, so I have a ending question that I ask all my guests and I think you're yeah. probably going to be able to take this in a very unique route, but I always ask my, my guests on the show, what does it mean to do things with style and grace in your opinion? Ooh, <laughs> do things with style and grace. Interesting. Um, well I'm not for someone who just made a film in the fashion industry. I'm not, I would not consider myself a fashionista. Um, So I think for me, I would kind of be more leaning on the grace side. So I think it means being your, your true self and taking every part of you on that mission, whether it's, you know, a part of you that other people may not think is, is really great. If you're a little bit persistent, some people may see that as a bad thing, but I think being wholly you as you take on a task and a challenge is what's really, really important. And I think that we get back what is meant for us if we actually go about it in a way that is authentic to ourselves. Yeah. And that actually fits in perfectly with the message of the film. And it's all about just embracing your true self, whether that's, you know, you at a size six or you at a size four, whatever, or even any size and the imperfections that we all have and just embracing those flaws as uniquely you. So I think that's a perfect way Mm -hmm. to interpret that question. (laughs) Thank you. Well, thank you, Jenny. And give me one more time the date that this will launch on iTunes and Amazon and the online platforms. So May 18th, Friday, May 18th, 
It will be on iTunes and Amazon and VOD. So wherever you seek out your films, it'll be there. Perfect. Well, I hope that my listeners will go right away to that that website and be able to access not only the screening kit, but watch it and their own house party and share this really important message with their loved ones, friends, family, and people in their lives. So thank you, Jenny, so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Hey ladies, thanks for listening. And we hope you enjoyed today's episode. To help empower more women, please be a doll and rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. For show notes and other free resources we mentioned today, go to stylebydeidra.com.